needed in, in Europe. So today I'm going to summarize a little bit all the activities that we have been carrying out within a um, Horizon 2020 project, but this was just a frame because we have been working in this since, uh, since uh, our technological center was open. So first of all, I want to present a little bit Idonial because it's quite new. We were, we were born in 2019, but we were uh, born through the merging of two technological centers, Prodintech dedicated to advanced manufacturing and industrial design, and IDMA dedicated to materials technology. So although our name is new, we have a very long trajectory, and we are located in Asturias, a region in the north of Spain, if, if you don't know it. So what we, what we do? Well, we have all the technologies related to material development and advanced manufacturing, as, we, as I was saying. But since uh, Prodintech was created in 2004, we decided that additive manufacturing, 3D printing, it was one of our key technologies, and we start working on there. So when, when everybody was talking about prototyping and additive manufacturing was not so in fashion, we were already pioneers in this technology in Spain. And we work with many sectors, including construction as well, although aerospace and health are the main ones, and defense are the main ones uh, working now, and we work with different materials and processes and, and so on. The good thing about Idonial is that now we can cover all the uh, value chains that I will explain later on why it's so important. We can cover since uh, the idea, the simulation, from then all the characterization of the materials and preparation of new materials to all the process and post-processing. And this global view is very important for the development of additive manufacturing. But let's go to the topic. I'm going to introduce, as I was mentioned before, a little bit the activities we did with AM Motion. AM Motion is, uh, or was, because it was finalized, but as I'm saying, it's continuing in another way, was a project that was uh, leading by Prodintech and was involving very key actors in additive manufacturing and industrial associations, companies, and also the regions. But although we were a small consortium 13, partners for all these strategic um, actions, we gathered together many, many uh, companies and uh, research centers and authorities and policy, policy makers into the problem. So we were doing all the activities with more than 300 experts, and we were involving all the community and we we'll keep on doing it. Because if not, additive manufacturing and Europe, uh, they cannot go together. We need the leadership and we need also to join forces. We cannot have like a hit con project and then when it finishes, nothing has happened. We need to continue and we need to join private forces with public forces and all this stuff. So we were working very hard with this. What was the final goal? Well, we want to contribute to the rapid market uptake of additive manufacturing technologies across Europe. So we were working in different fields. I, not, I cannot tell you everything today, but just a quick summary. Technology development. This is one thing. We need to keep on working new materials. We need to keep on working new processes, new machines, involving new actors, and so on. We need to keep on working on that. But we also need technology transition. So it's not only R&D, but it's industrial implementation. And for this, we, not, we need to know all the market barriers. So it's not only about technology R&D, but it's also about legislation, standardization, skills and education. So this is a package if additive manufacturing should go to the market, whatever is the, is the sector, okay? And of course, communication and networking. We need to explain what is really additive manufacturing because now like it's a bubble and everybody knows about it and everybody thinks that it's useful for the process and maybe not. So we really need to give uh, the good message from Europe. Why, why is that? Well, it's clear. Europe has a big additive manufacturing potential. This is not because we say it, but because we can prove it. We have a lot to offer in many different fields. And beside that, there is a lot of industry, academia, policy makers that are already putting money and efforts in developing these technologies. Why? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a set of technologies that applies to many, many sectors. You are here today for because of construction, but we have aerospace, we have energy, we have health, we have um, automotive, defense, many, many, many. You know, you need to know for what in each sector, but it applies to all. So there is a lot of interest I'm joining forces going together. What else? The problem is, well, there is not a single technology or solution. It's not that you buy a machine or they build a machine for you and you press the button and you get whatever is needed. No, it's very complicated and depends on the sector. So we need to explain and you need to know what kind of technologies are there, what kind of process I need, and what for is needed, what kind of, what kind of material I should use, and so on. So it's not a simple thing. 
is complicated. As I was mentioning in my introdu introduction, production is not a single step. You need to consider the whole value chain. So you need to, well, I don't know if this, well, you need to work in the design and engineer. Sometimes you need simulation. You need to work in materials, the process, the post-processing, depending on the sector you need or you don't need it, and the end of light and, and, and the product. But at the same time, you need to have the people with the skills. You need to find your business model if you want to implement it in the, in the market. And you need to go through industrialization if you want to use it like a normal process. And it's nearby and depends on the sector. Some parts is already industrialized, like in the consumer one for doing, the, for example, the glasses. I don't know if you see, for example, now in the corte inglés, you can buy your own customized 3D printing glasses. You already can, can do that. It's, it's a reality. The, it's industrialized. Also, the head. Your hearings are already industrialized since many, many years and are, di are uh, done by 3D printing. But for other co uh, sectors, you still need to go. Okay? And finally, as I was mentioned, uh, we need to keep building confidence. Okay? Because I was, as I was mentioned, you need to find uh, your process. You need to, f to balance if additive manufacturing is for you, or you still have to continue with advanced manufacturing because for some cases it's not, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. You need to know if you, you want to use it for prototyping, for final product, what is in there, and if it's really valid for your company. So with all this framework, we were working in, in emotion and we were working with, with the commission. But it's true, additive manufacturing matters and we have all these big challenges, but we have enormous potential. So what we want to do, or we wanted to do. We want to see how to better uh, uh, use the available knowledge. There is a lot of knowledge. You cannot imagine how many European, regional, and national projects in additive manufacturing are there. You cannot imagine how many millions of euros are put in there. But when you go to the big conference, you hear that um, we don't know who is doing additive manufacturing. When we don't know, or, or you see like a lot of employees that are sa the same in one country and the other. So ev everybody's working in the same and they don't know each other. So we need to see what is there. And how to capitalize uh, all the technological advancements that are doing there. Very important, how to keep on going from technology to manufacturing, to the real world. And how to capture the, the value and gain competitiveness and leadership. So we try to make a way for giving clear directions and goals and try to find the smart networking and cooperation within these actions that we carry out. So that's what we need. We need to know each other and to get closer cooperation between actors across the regions and across uh, the countries to accelerate the market uptake. Okay? So what we first did is to use the whole value chain, as I was mentioned before. So we were always following this principle in all our activities. We need to know who was doing modeling, who was doing design, who is doing materials, who is doing process, post-processing, product and on life. And in this sense, we carry out many, many different activities, but I'm going to briefly present two of them today. Our database, uh, e-cluster tool that is available in the um, additive manufacturing platform website, I will explain later on, and the roadmap that we were doing with, uh, with the experts. So, as I was mentioned, additive manufacturing applies for many sectors, but we were selecting the seven ones that were more key for Europe to go forward. And you can see them there. The construction was, of course, included. The maturity of additive manufacturing in the different sectors is different. It's not the same in aerospace and in construction. But we thought that construction and, for example, energy are the ones that are following but are, are really going uh, ahead. And HITCOM, in this sense, was <coughs> one of the key projects from the European Commission to prove that additive manufacturing applies into the sector. And we built the, the database. What we were doing is offer for free to all the actors to be in a place and explain what they can do or what their intentions were within all these uh, sectors and these uh, value chain segments. So this way, when the commission mentions that, for example, what is the industry that works with additive manufacturing? I see no industry. We can prove it. So. You have this industry working in materials for additive manufacturing, in, in design, and also all these RTOs and also that follows. We were also mapping the projects. I know this is very kind, boring thing that everybody maps and maps and maps, and uh, we are also telling the commission that we have at some point stop mapping because uh, we need to, to, to already have that, uh, that um, somewhere and know. And as you see, more than 400 uh, 
millions of euros. We were putting many, many projects in different kind of things only in Europe. But you cannot imagine that we were mapping as well national and regional projects, how much is there and how many activities are carried out, even in construction as well. Okay? And we see that also where are the actors in the whole Europe. This, that seems very simple, is quite complicated. And now we have a lot of information of who is doing what. Okay? And it's very important for the matching. Because I don't know how familiar you are with the smart specialization strategy for the regions, but the regions are also putting a lot of money. And they would like to know who is there. And now we have the, a tool to prove them uh, who in the region are doing that and why it's so important. Then, the roadmap. I bring like only three copies of the summary. I have here, I will put it upside, but you can download it in, in the link I have in my presentation. The roadmap is very important because we wanted to bring directions. We wanted to bring goals according to the needs we have. So in this sense, uh, we, might, we, we have a vision that additive manufacturing uh, will be for Europe, uh, I mean, leader, uh, Europe will be the leader in additive manufacturing in 2030. And the additive manufacturing will be one, uh, the one solving many, many of the challenges, societal and environmental challenges. So we were working with the, with the experts and the commission trying to match all the key topics that are there with additive manufacturing. From all the opportunities that are coming, that you know now for the printing, for example, that is the next step or artificial intelligence, um, all, the res uh, all the topics about circular economy, everything that is like the high topic in the, in the new program that is coming, we want it to connect it with additive manufacturing. And there are some connections. So there are some opportunities. Also, there are some challenges regarding, as I was mentioned, technology, industrial access, standardization, education and training, business finance, IPRs, smart specialization, and as I was mentioned, so we were covering all these matters to let the uh, policymakers especially know uh, all these issues re with regards to additive manufacturing and the seven sectors I was mentioned before. So we select the key products for each uh, sector, we follow the value chains, and we got some uh, non-technological gaps. What we call non-technological is the, as I was mentioned, standardization, legislation, and so. We uh, identify these gaps for whole, uh, the whole sectors. And we, we also make some plans, how to solve this, how to finance this, how to promote this. We also uh, go um, sector by sector. In this case, I present you uh, the, the product that were uh, highlighted for the construction sector. We were doing some kind of groups of where additive manufacturing can apply in, in construction. And we were relating all these needs with the products. And then we identify the needs in the short, medium, and long term. So we identify, uh, uh, in this case, nine key actions that the people in the sector were uh, asking for. So we need to work on this, on that, and that to arrive to the implementation. But this, this is not a printed copy that is ready and is done, and that's all. This is something that we review every year. And we, involve, we try to involve new people that were not in the beginning, because maybe we don't uh, they don't know it or something like that. And we review these things because we, we want to roll the reality of this, maybe, um, and, and to, uh, how to say, and to describe new actions. Each of the actions, each, each of the challenges that we mentioned, well, this is just a summary. We explain why is the reason of that and what is needed. So everything is, is in the roadmap. This is, as I said, it's a summary. The whole thing is, is, is higher. And now this is being used uh, by uh, the commission the, even the industries, uh, the regions, and the national governments to uh, know what is in the additive manufacturing and why the, what the people are asking, not to duplicate efforts, try to join one. So, as I mentioned, the Horizon 2020 project, uh, it was a project, it ended December last year, and now the people say, okay, you got the money, you did that, and that's all, right? No, we continue, because uh, there is a big cluster in Europe public uh, European technology pl platform that is uh, recognized by the European Commission, that is the Additive Manufacturing uh, Technology Platform, IM platform, that is active since 2006, and uh, Idonia is part of the managing board, where we keep on doing these activities. It's free to join, if you wish. Uh, we are a point of networking, reference, and coordination, and we also belong to the manufacturing manufacture, um, platform, that is the one in advanced manufacturing in, in Europe. And we 
try to uh, gather all the needs of the actors around. As I mentioned, it's free to join. Uh, it's just to become a member on website. Very simple, you cover all the uh, spaces and then you, you can log in and you have the opportunity to go to this database that I was mentioning with all the contacts, with all the people working in the projects, with all the regions that are uh, putting some money for the smart specialization, with uh, a lot of projects there where you can see what the developments are. And also you can you can contact with people because if you wish, you can show your contact there and you, and you can establish your own links with the people in the platform at European level and even international level because we have many members from USA, uh, Japan, Singapore and so on. So I'm not going to bore you anymore because you want to go in deep into the construction thing, I know. But, uh, but uh, just to let you know that we are kind of an intermediary connection uh, between all, that the platform we are working for free to all of you. We, we don't get any money. We don't ask for any money. We are very related to the European Commission. And if you have any need, you can come to us. You can let us know. And uh, we can work together and transfer to, to them. OK? So uh, and just for final analysis, this is my final slide. As I was mentioned, we, we highlighted that the uh, skills for additive manufacturing are very important. And although there are many offers now coming from masters and so on, we wanted to really match the needs of the industry with, what, uh, with the training offer. Okay? So we are now in another project, it's an Erasmus Plus project that was coming from Emotion as well, which uh, is coordinated by the European Welding Federation that is now get going to the additive manufacturing world. And uh, we are going to do many, many activities. I can explain your video presentation by email if someone is interested. But I want to, what I want to present today is that in this link below, the survey monkey one, we are now doing a very small survey, 10 minutes. This is addressing industry. We will have another one for RTOs, where we are asking in a very simple and private way, what are your needs and what are the profiles that you are needed for your uh, additive manufacturing work, OK? So if you be some kind of uh, participating, I will appreciate. If not, anyway, thank you. And um, if you want to follow this, we are also looking for people interesting, and we will celebrate diff different events and uh, meetings with experts. So just contact me and let me know. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula, for your strategy.